All right. So we're just going to jump into bids real quick. And inside our bids here, I've just created a, a quick sample package. Um, so we're going to demonstrate building some, uh, some simple variables and how we might actually use them. So first thing I'm going to do here, uh, I do have a data source. Just go ahead and add that data source to my package. That's fine. And I'm using the AdventureWorks, uh, AdventureWorks sample databases for these for 2008 R2. So first thing I'm going to do here, I'm just going to create, uh, create two simple variables here. And also, I need to drag out a data flow task. So in this data flow, uh, what I'm going to do is just add an ODB source. We're going to let that sit there for just a moment. So back out here in the control flow, I'm going to go into the variables window. And I'm just going to create two variables here. Now, also, since we're creating these variables in the package, you know, normally I said that you'd want to, or I said that normally you would want to uh, scope all your variables to the container that needs them. Um, but for these, I'm just going to scope these two to the package level, because it's just two variables, not a big deal. But I also want to show you something as well to be aware of when you're working with variables. So I'm going to create this first variable. And I'm just going to call this one. Uh, DT start date. So I'm doing some Hungarian notation here, adding DT for date time to the beginning of this variable, so I know when I look at it exactly what data type that is. So in the data type, I'm just going to select date time. Now, for this variable, as soon as you click it, it's going to give you the current date and time. But I want to change this one, actually. For example, I want to change this to Let's make this January 1st of 2000. All right, so I'm going to create a second variable here. But one thing that you definitely want to be careful of when you're creating variables in your packages is you want to make sure that you're scoping them to the proper task or to the package level if that's what you're wanting to do. So for instance, if I create this other variable and just call it DT end date, make this one a date time, but you're also going to notice right over here that it's scoped to the data flow task, which is fine if I want to scope it to the data flow task, but if I click off of that and click out here in the control flow, it's going to disappear. So then you're not even going to see that until you select that task again. So that's one thing you really want to be aware of when creating variables that you haven't selected some task out here that you don't want to have that variable. So when you create variables, and you have, say for instance, like in this case, we put it in the wrong scope. There's no way to change that. Unfortunately, you have to delete the variable and recreate it. There are some third-party tools out there that, uh, that may allow you to do so, but when you're using SSIS with no third-party add-ins, you, you cannot uh, rescope the variable or change that scope. And I actually just, just uh, deleted the wrong variable. So let me go ahead and recreate both of those. <laughs> Okay, so this one was just DT start date. And a data type of date time. I'm just going to change the value of this to January 1st of 2000. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and create a second variable. And I'll just call this one DT end date. Let's go up to the package level and date time. This one I'm just going to leave the, the current date and time. That's fine. So we have both of these variables. They both have hard-coded values. So these are just some basic, you know, simple variables. Now, how would we actually use variables in a package? One of the things that we could do is we can go into this data flow. And let's just say I want to, let's see, I'm just going to connect to the AdventureWorks 2008 uh, database, or uh, yeah, database. And I'm just going to use a SQL command. So in your sources, when you're using SQL commands, you can use these different variables over here inside of your SQL statements. So we can do something such as, let me just grab this real quick. So I can just run a select statement. Doing a select all and making all my DBAs cringe. 
So I'm just going to select everything out of this table. And let me just throw in a quick where clause here. So what we're doing here is I'm just doing a select all from the production.product table where my cell end date is greater than question mark and my cell end date is less than question mark. So these two question marks, these are basically parameters right here. I'm going to map these to my variables. So I can use these variables in the select statement. So in order to do that, once I've added my, uh, my SQL statement here, I have my question marks. You just click on the parameters button over here. It's going to show me the parameters. It's going to change the names to 0 and 1. And then we have to map these parameters to the variables. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well is that these parameters here, they're going to be in the same order as the question marks. So this first one here is going to be your first parameter, and the last one is going to be the, uh, the second parameter. So in this case, looking for where the cell end date is uh, greater than question mark, that's going to be our start date. So we'll just find oh, no, that's system. Sorry about that. Where did it go? There we go. So we have DT start date. So I can't put those in alphabetical order for us. And the next one, of course, is going to be DT end date. Okay, so we've mapped our parameters. And so now we can actually execute this. Now, one thing you'll also notice when you're using parameters and variables inside of your SQL statements, you can't get a preview of your data because of the fact that these parameters are not going to evaluate until the package is executed. All right, so we have our SQL statement. I'll just click OK. Now, just for the sake of this uh, demonstration, I'm just going to throw this into a trash destination. Uh, in most cases, you could use a union all, of course, but I just have a little tool here from Pragmatic Works that is a terminator destination. It serves as a trash destination, and I don't get a little error over my data flow task. So I'm going to execute this now. And remember, it's looking for the dates that we've specified in these two variables. So I'll execute the first package. And you can see we end up getting 98 rows. So it's found everything between the start dates of January 1st, 2000 and the end date of today. 